time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by New Stavette, America's leading spray deodorant. The lotion spray deodorant that likes balm to your skin. Boom! There goes perspiration. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. We have a guest tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the distinguished author of The Cane Mutiny and the bestseller Marjorie Morningstar, Mr. Herman Wolf. to me of introducing my old boss from radio days, America's great humorist, Fred Allen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Herman. Uh, in the radio days, you, uh, the, the, the people left. They weren't fired as they are <laughs> in television. But uh, as a matter of fact, I wouldn't recognize you tonight except I saw your picture on the new Collier's coming out and your story in there, and I just uh, want to say that you look so affluent, I didn't uh, recognize you from the <laughs> underpaid days when you were with me. But now, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I take great pride in presenting my son, a famous Alan, Mr. Steve. <laughs> Thank you very much, Father. And now I'd like to uh, <laughs> introduce a very dear friend of mine whom I haven't, I'm sorry to say, seen in quite some time, your good friend, too, John Daly. Thank you, panel. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line? We're up to our old tricks tonight. Actually, I think uh, the panel will be interested to know that we thought Bennett Cerf might be among us before the night was out, but George Goebel is still chasing him all over the United States looking for that interview they never got last night. <laughs> We're up to, as I said, our usual tricks. We have a panel of uh, distinguished authors with us tonight. Miss Dorothy has her nationally syndicated column. You know Mr. Woke's work, and you know Fred Allen's work, Treadmill to Oblivion, and uh, Steve here is a man of so many talents. His most recent activity is a short story a collection of short stories, 14 for tonight, so I'm kind of sorry for the panelists, except that there's some tough panelists tonight. It's a sideline for us tonight. Sideline <laughs> for you, but we've got the challenges to work you over, and I think uh, we'll have a mystery celebrity later on, but it's time for these four experts of ours to see what they can do with the challenges. So will you come in and sign in, please, sir? Walter? Brent? Walter Brent. Where are you from, Mr. Brent? Chicago. From Chicago. Well, it's nice to have you with us. The panel, as you can see, has a little different complexion tonight. We've got some uh, new folks with us, at least one new man, Mr. Herman Woke, there, and they need all the help they can get, I'm sure. So you go over to their lip and have a look at you, will you? All right, Mr. Brent, over here now, if you will, and sit down next to me. And uh, you do know how we score this operation, do you? Yes, I do. Fine, then let's let the people at home and those who are with us in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All righty, panel, Mr. Brent is self-employed. And I think that uh, since Miss Dorothy is the only lady on the panel. We'll let her shed the first light tonight. Suppose you begin things off, Miss Dorothy. Uh, Mr. Brandt, is there a product involved in what you do? No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Do you deal in services? Yes. Uh, are your services available for men and for women? Yes. Uh, do you deal uh, with groups of people uh, uh, as against uh, individuals? Yes. You're not... Uh, I'd like to take a chance, John, if you don't mind. Go right ahead, Fred. <laughs> you, well, my chances are fatal, I mean. <laughs> do you, uh, 
Uh, are you in, a, in the, uh, any form of the entertainment business? Yes. Are you really? <laughs> it comes as a great surprise to me. I don't know. It, uh, uh, I, I, you look like a performer. I don't know why. I don't, want, I don't say that disparagingly because <laughs> you're not performing at the, at the moment. But are you in, in some form of show business? Yes. Uh, are you in the outdoor game? Yes. Do you, do you work with a, 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 a circus or a carnival or something of that sort? Let's have a small conference, please. I think the fair thing to do, Fred, and Mr. Brent agrees with me, is that it's perfectly reasonable to assume that he could work with a circus or a carnival. John. Yes, Mr. Allen. <laughs> do you think you really get so much more in, in Encore? <laughs> <laughs> do you, uh, uh, well, is it a circus? Well, it could. It's well, does fair he to associate with, does Mr. Brent associate with people or with animals? Do you deal with animals? Do you a trainer of some sort? Yeah. He deals, with animals. he deals with animals, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, associates with it. Large an uh, animals are larger than I am? <laughs> no. Smaller <Not> animals. <laughs> That's asking a lot, though, Fred. That's two down and eight to go. <laughs> Mr. Allen? Yes, Fred isn't a very big animal. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> As they go. <laughs> well, let's, let's get to another type of animal altogether. Do you deal with uh, four footed animals? Yes. Yes. Well, that eliminates a lot. Of <laughs> eliminates me. <laughs> I'm glad you I said want that. You I, <laughs> I want the record to show that we were never thinking of Fred in this connotation. No. Uh, the record will show I'm not even thinking. <laughs> so long since I played this game. Are these animals in an enclosure? Well, I would say Mr. when Mr. Brent has something to do with them, they might be described as being in an enclosure, yes. Uh, is there an element of danger involved when you're working with them? Sometimes, yes. Uh, are these animals, uh, could they be described as cats? No. That's no. three down and seven to go, Mr. Wolf. <laughs> uh, are you uh, visible when these animals perform? Yes. Do you uh, put them through their paces, as it were? Yeah. yeah, I think mm -hmm. Mr. Brent could be described as putting his associates or associates through their paces, yes. Have you ever been wounded by one of these animals? <laughs> <laughs> you mean cut open somewhere? <laughs> well, was he uh, ever sorry he made a misstep in connection with one of them? I'm sure he must have been sorry at one time or another. Were you, Mr. Brent? Oh, yes. Yes? Mm -hmm. uh, have these animals ever appeared on television with you? Yes. <laughs> Don't well, give up authors have two feet. <laughs> we'll cover that. Well, now, uh, do these animals uh, perform tricks? Mm, no, oh. I don't think so. Not in the connotation of a trick. We would give you a no on that. You might want to argue the brief later on, Herman. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are they really smaller than Fred? Well, I take Mr. Brent's word for it. He's the one who has, you know, plays with them. He says they're smaller than Fred. Well, know. as a layman, would you consider them smaller than Fred? I would Fred? see that it, it could very easily be so, Dorothy, yes. And Fred, would you mind getting down on all fours for yes. a moment? <laughs> something other than dogs? Yes. Are they larger than, well, let's say even a police dog? Yes. Could you get on the back of one of them? <laughs> <laughs> I think the answer to that might be, and Mr. Brenner, I'm willing to stand corrected, you probably could, but could how you long you stay there would be another question. Is that right, sir? That's right. But they have four feet. Yeah. Are they in the horse, donkey, mule family? In the horse, donkey, mule family? No. No horse, donkey, mule family here. That's five down and five to go, Mr. Allen. And they don't do any tricks at all? No. What sort of an act is oh, it just? Maybe, oh, excuse me. 
Dorothy, <laughs> now listen, this is, this is significant. Dorothy used to have weenies years ago. I think Dorothy's got a weenie. All I've right, seen this Dorothy. expression. I'll give you 15 seconds. we have seconds. a conference? Or? 15 yes. seconds for a conference. I'm sure I'm I will welcome it. <laughs> the only thing I was thinking, it might be a type of animal that acted rather than did tricks, like one of those goats that are always performing in Tea House of the Orbit's Moon and things like that. No. Don't no. even ask it. All right, the 15 <laughs> seconds is up. It's around. Is it uh, in the monkey, the simian field? No. no, that's six down and four to go, and I'm going to give you one minute more because I'm afraid you're not getting this one. Yeah, we will waste this minute. You might as well quit right now. <laughs> uh, does this animal have sharp teeth? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> I wish I did. Uh, does it have fur? Yes. Sounds frightening, doesn't it? <laughs> Probably the only one of its kind. <laughs> um, is it a wolf of some sort? <laughs> no, and I'm going to tip all the cards over because actually I think when I tell it to you, you'll say, well, why didn't we get that right away once you got into the show business field? Because Mr. Brent boxes a kangaroo in oh. vaudeville. He has a vaudeville act. He boxes a kangaroo. Yes, sir. They aren't four-footed. Those are hands that they box with. Oh, they, they walk on them. No, I think, actually, we'd like to think of them as hands, but they're actually <laughs> considered four-footed animals. I'm what sorry. What happened with the Gordon brothers with the boxing kangaroo years ago? The kangaroos are running the act now. <laughs> <laughs> they took two, two falls out of three. Mr. Brent, we fooled them. Thanks very much for being an interesting guest. Well, I'm... <laughs> Panel. <laughs> Panel, I must say we um, started off with a real tough one. Perhaps this will give you a better break. Let's see what you can do with another challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please, sir? <laughs> Robert? Robert Klepper, is that right, sir? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, where are you from, sir? Lawrence, Kansas. Lawrence, Kansas? Yes. Well, fine. That's uh, another representative of the Midwest. You were born out in that country, were yes, you? Yes, that's right. Well, sir, it's good farming country, and let's mislead the panel a bit, so take a walk down there and mislead them further. Mr. Clapper? Yes, Mr. Clapper. How are you? Hello, Mr. Clapper. Hello, Mr. Clapper. All right, Mr. Clapper, over here. <coughs> Pardon me, and sit down next to me, if you will. Do you know how we score operationally? Yes. Fine. Then let the peep, let the... Let's let the people at home and our friends here in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, Mr. Klepper is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Steve Allen. Is there a product connected with your work, Mr. Klepper? Yes, there is. Might it be found in the home? No. <laughs> <laughs> One down and nine to go, yeah. Mr. Woke. <laughs> uh, is uh, this product that you uh, deal with an organic, either animate or derived from animal? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Would you find it outside the home? Yes. <laughs> is it something likable? I beg your pardon, sir? Well, is it a, a product that does some good for somebody or something? We hope so. Uh, is it solid rather than liquid? <laughs> Could be. I would think that generally, if in our terms of reference, which would not be specific, we would say it was solid and that it does that. Is it bigger than Steve's bread box? Well, actually, size is a variable factor that wouldn't give you much information. Oh, I see. But you are employed by some firm or organization. Yes, ma'am. Is it profit-making? No. That makes it three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. You work from some, uh, for some branch of the government? No. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Allen. Why isn't it making a profit, then? <laughs> Sorry, we were just, uh, actually, uh, I forgot to give him something for the recipe for breakfast. Go ahead, Mr. Allen. You work for some uh, 
business that's either breaking even or losing money. <laughs> uh, is there anything uh, in religious in your work? No. That's five down and five to go, Mr. Woke. It's a non-profit making organization, but it's not governmental. Uh, that is correct. Uh, is it uh, a uh, cooperative enterprise of some kind? You mean in the sense of a cooperative dairy, et cetera, yes. and so forth? That's fine. That's six down and four to go, Miss Gilgallon. Now, to get back to this product, Mr. Klepper, uh, you say size is unimportant. It's a variable factor and would not necessarily right. reveal anything. Is color, uh, would that be of any assistance? Wouldn't help you a bit. Oh, well, I won't ask. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is this something that is found in nature at all? You mean as a complete, completed entity, is it found in that state in nature? No, basically, uh, is it taken from nature, whatever this product is? Well, you see, the thing I'm trying to determine, Dorothy, basically everything that we have by way of product comes from some natural source. To that degree, it's taken from nature. Thank you, Joyce Kilmer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you a tree in the morning. Could I buy this at a store? No. No. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Allen. I'm going to give you one more minute. Well, when uh, uh, somebody said that it couldn't be brought into the house, the people laughed at it. It, it. Can it be brought into the house because it's objectionable in, in any way? Is it potent in any way? I think the answer is yes. It, it would might be, be potent. considered objectionable. Is in it the house. something that's used uh, uh, for a, p a specific purpose? Yes. It is used. It's not used. Uh, it's not used on the land. It's not used on the land you, by way of tilling the soil. Uh, it could be <laughs> spread on the land. I mean, we have a fair inkling of what you have in mind, Mr. Allen. Like you said it. it's not used, and the answer would be yes, it's not. Okay. Uh, is it used on the land by way of tilling the soil? Do you want to do this one again? Uh, to, 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 to stimulate something to grow, I mean, is it used? That would be. Thank you, Mr. Allen. That's eight now and two to go, Mr. Allen. Is there anything educational in your work? Are you connected with education is what I meant to say. I imagine that's what I meant to I say. I would think that question would have to be answered, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you instruct in any way in the use of something? In the loosest sense of what I said, whatever I said. <laughs> In the m most loose sense. <laughs> <laughs> the most loose sense. I'll see if I can tighten it up sense. a little bit then. <laughs> uh, now to get back to the product for a moment. Is it something that is, is size not important because you could have a lot of this piled up or you could have a little of it in your hand, something of that sort? Mm, I wouldn't think so. No. no, I think we have to give you no on that. And you're so far away, I'm going to throw the other card over. And this is going to give you, I think, something of a kick. Actually, Mr. Klepper tests atom bombs. He works with UCLA, University of California, and they have a contract with the Atomic Energy Commission, and this is the man who tests them, mm. which you couldn't really be expected to get. Thanks very much, sir. Thank you. Good to have you here. And I might say, panel, that one thing I'm very pleased about is that Mr. Klepper, needless to say, is a scientist of the first rank, a doctor of philosophy, and he told me before the program that he and his wife never miss What's My Line. Isn't that nice to know? And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which part of the program my friends on the panel are all blindfolded. Blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? mystery challenge we go to a different form of questions. You ask questions in turn, one at a time, moving clockwise, and we'll begin it all with Fred Allen. Allen. Are you uh, in the entertainment field? Somehow. <laughs> what? Somehow. I think the answer would be yes, Fred. Mr. Allen? Oh, this is one question at a mm -hmm. time, yes. 
Uh, you are a man, of course. I think the answer will be yes. Mr. Walk. Are you an entertainer, sir? Yes. Miss Kilgallen? Are you... Are you ever seen in the Broadway theater? Are you ever seen in the Broadway theater? Legitimate. Yes. Mr. Allen? Are you on television? Right now. <laughs> right now. Four to go. <laughs> Four to go. <laughs> you seem to be getting a lot of laughs. Uh, are you used to dealing with comedy? Uh, yes. Mr. Woke? Uh, you said you're on television right now. Are you apt to be seen again in the next month or so? I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, to so it's not, not to mislead you. It's possible that our guest could be on in the next month or he could not be. It's one of those things. Miss Kilgallen. Were you born any place other than the United States? <laughs> yes. Mr. Allen? Uh, not in Brooklyn. <laughs> Now, uh, are you in a, a, a picture that's currently here in, in New York or going to open here? No, sir. Mr. Allen? Uh, it's very difficult for me to hear the voice as it's being disguised, but there's a certain inflection which is going to lead me to take a wild guess, and if not, I'll just go home. Are you Victor Borga? Yes! <laughs> This is the disguised voice right here. Victor was oh. talking through this piece of paper and also a comb. <laughs> and I just ate the sandwich that was in it. <laughs> <laughs> but I want you to know that uh, he didn't bring any of the sandwich in with him so that uh, the rest of us have to stay hungry. Of course, this is the gentleman who, uh, just for those few who didn't see him, sat on our panel one night and we all had hysterics. And I wasn't a bit surprised that the audience did again tonight. You've just finished that rather startling one-man run, which ran, what, more than a year and... About two and a half years. Two and a half years. <laughs> all by that one-man show, and you're going to take it out around the country, huh? Yes, I'm starting Friday. Golly day. In uh, Worcester, Massachusetts, in Boston. Baltimore, Washington. Worcester, Boston. Baltimore, Washington, too? Uh, Birmingham. Uh, no, what is it there? Well, Birmingham. Birmingham. The, the one we Any have. There's another ham. There's another ham. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't remember. Toledo and, and various... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just sold a ticket in Toledo. <laughs> I must say, Victor, you're the only one I've ever known who could get a laugh out of just listing towns that you were going to go to. You know? <laughs> what about your television, though? Actually, I hope we didn't mislead you, Herman. He is going to do some television programs, spectaculars for CBS, but I don't know whether the first one's been set. Has no, it? it hasn't. It hasn't been said. No. Are they waiting for you to light? They have been said a lot about it, but it hasn't been said, actually. <laughs> have you got a sponsor for it? No. Well, that's the trouble. Actually, we have. <laughs> you can set everything, but... We have a sponsor, but he hasn't made up his mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, Victor, I must say that having you on television tonight was delightful, and may I thank you for well, being thank our you, guest. <coughs> Will you say hello to the panel? Because I know they'd all like to see you. most remarkable man who not only does remarkable things with the piano, but if you're a resident in New York and have any taste for Cornish hen, every time you pick it up, it's one of Victor's hens. He raises Cornish hen. And now, if I may say first, Mr. Woke, that it was very nice having you on our panel. Hope you'll be back with us again one of these days. Now I'll say good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Woke. Good night, Fred. Good night, Dorothy. And I'll say good night for Bennett, too. And good night, Steve. <laughs> Good night, Fred. See you tomorrow night. Okay, it's nice to be back again, John. Good night. Good night. And by the way, Desi Arnez will be on our panel next Sunday, so we expect some more fireworks. And good night to the panel, good night to everybody, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line. Americans get off on Labor Day.